all-American half pound. Pure beef patty, lettuce, tomato. Singles. Going. Singles Going Steady, the podcast dedicated to exploring great singles with a particular eye to the punk, new wave, and DIY eras of the last century. I'm Adrian Madoc. And I'm Steve McGowan. We're in a band called The Beef People. We released a single in 1986 on our own label, Zub Records, and we are record collectors and passionate, especially about the expression of pop music perfection that is the single recording. Exploring the mystery of what makes for a great single is what propelled us to begin this podcast. And what's our great single for today? Today is uh, Singles Going Steady 039 and the English band The Stranglers and their amazing single No More Heroes with the B-side In the Shadows. And amazing because this is one that we we and the beef people... Um, Called our own for a while. Yes, yes. Not in a way that we see that we'll, that we'll talk about later. <laughs> we uh, a little foreshadowing. We, we definitely, we definitely covered this song, and uh, we'll play you some of that later. Uh, the Stranglers are a band from London. Um, they were part of the initial punk wave with uh, the Damned and the Sex Pistols, and then the Clash. But the cool thing about the Stranglers were they were a little bit older. Um, uh, they were older than the, the kids in the Pistols and in Damned, and they had already been playing in rock and roll bands for for a while, and uh, they were more than proficient on their instruments. They didn't just pick up and and yeah, start this playing. This wasn't punk. DIY, right. you know, mm-hmm. um. exactly. And uh, the the one of the things that we really liked about the Stranglers was they had the same or we had the same format as they did: right. guitar, bass keyboards and drums uh, and since they were so heavy on the keyboards they're often called the doors of punk um, it was, keyboard was not something you would normally hear in the in the British punk scene it was almost all about the the uh, n- the nasty guitar sound and they could do that but but they always had the keyboard and they had the lead bass was Jean-Jacques Burnell um, so this was their second album the the first single from their second album called No More Heroes and it was released in 1977 on United Artists Records in Britain and we're going to listen to it now good Oh, 
Well, that was No More Heroes, and uh, definitely uh, a song with an attitude. Um, you know, the Sex Pistols said, no future. Strangers say, no more heroes, and they have a little bit more historical context. I love how he mentions the great Elmira, who is the uh, the famous uh, art forger. Oh. <laughs> and uh, uh, Pancho Sanja, uh, Sancho Panza, excuse me, who is fictional, and... Uh, he, he, Trotsky and yeah, a little for, forerunner of our uh, who will you hear cover this? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Fictional, imaginary. Right, right, exactly. So um, uh, it's a strong song. Um, keyboard riffs everywhere. Um, some guitar playing. Hugh Cornwell on the nasty s- singing. Um, it has a punk attitude, but it's a little bit more sophisticated. It's proficient. Yeah, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's not it's it's not. A mallet. Mm, right, right. It, 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 it wasn't an easy song to learn, let's put it that way. <laughs> right. And what you were saying, lead bass before, and, and mm-hmm. I was really thinking about the bass part. And, and to me, it leads in not in being complexity like mm-hmm. follow me guys, right. but um, in the sense that it, that it, it, it's really, uh, it's a brute. I mean, yes. it, mm-hmm. it, it, it's insistent. It was a hell of a lot of fun to play because yeah. it was just, it was like going into a crowd, mm-hmm. you know, with your shoulders yeah. leading and, and just muscling through. Yeah, just pushing through with it's the bass. It's absolutely yeah. muscular and, and, and insistent mm-hmm. and not fussy. And that's the thing about the Stranglers. They emphasize the sound of the bass. Yes. I think more than most bands. It was much louder in the mix than most bands and, and very... In in your face, insistent, very nasty. Urgent. You know, good, good, and we'll talk about that on in the shadows in a minute as well, because that's a whole a whole different kettle of fish. But um, the the single was produced by, uh, and all the first three records of the Stranglers were produced by Martin Ruschent, who passed away recently. Um, he produced all the Buzzcocks records right. that we we've we've waxed about, and uh, did the Stranglers, and uh, was also involved with bands like the Human League. Um, he was very famous. Somebody he, covers the waterfront. Yes, yes. So uh, he he uh, he knew how to get a good sound, and he was able to work with the Stranglers, who I believe were not the easiest bunch of guys to work <laughs> with. Uh, and uh, it, it's a great sound. So we want to fast forward from 1977 to the era of Britpop and Oasis and uh, Blur and all that. There was a band that I particularly really liked because I thought they sounded like the Stranglers. And I guess they thought so, <laughs> yeah. too. I guess they sounded a little more like the Stranglers than they were and supposed to. Most importantly, the Stranglers <laughs> thought they sounded like the Stranglers and not just yes. sounded like the Stranglers. Yes, we're talking about the band Elastica, uh, which um, had a few minor hits on uh, radio in the 90s. They were very big in Britain. They have a song called Waking Up. And we just played you No More Heroes. We're going to play you a little bit of Elastica doing Waking Up. And you see if you can spot any similarities, all right? (laughs) Here we go. Elastica from 1995.
Okay, so uh, what happened, as, as far as we can tell, is uh, the Stranglers publishers uh, got on to Elastica because this sound, this song basically is No More Heroes and uh, uh, threatened some legal action and is, as they say, was settled out of court. So we'll let, we'll let the entertainment person, law person, talk about it for a little bit here. Well, it, it's interesting reading about this. The word plagiarism kept coming up. And plagiarism is really a lay term. Right. Uh, you know, and, and an academic term. Yeah, and but it, not a legal term, right? It's not a legal mm-hmm. term. It really has to do with stealing ideas. Mm-hmm. And generally, um, you know, there's a an old saw in the law that ideas are free as the air. It's mm-hmm. much more complicated than that. <laughs> but generally, stealing the idea for a song, um, even the sound of a song, um, you know, putting aside the recent Blurred Lines lawsuit, which really screwed up the law, and, and I'm trying to ignore it. Right. Um, so just put that in, in a little box by by itself. Mm-hmm. But generally sounding, um, like having similar instrumentation or a similar attitude is okay. Right. But... Um, you know, it's copying the expression, mm-hmm. you know, so that if same chord structure, mm-hmm. same melodic line. Right. Um, so when you take actually structure of the song and couple it with the sound of a song, you get something that's that's, um, sub, you know, mm-hmm. got substantial similarity. And that's where the legal mm-hmm. trouble comes in, because yeah. that's really the copyright infringement standard. Yeah, well, I think you can you can hear that they've right. pretty the, much stolen the melodic line hook right. and, the, and the chord sequence, I think. Maybe a half step different, but it's right. the same. It's the same chord sequence, right? So this is is copying the bones of the song, <laughs> right. and maybe the the musculature mm. of the song, mm. and maybe the clothing the song was wearing. <laughs> and that we're getting something here and more just than slapping, just slapping your own makeup on it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, this and and you know, having, putting it on the radio ten years later right. does not make mm-hmm. it a new song. Yep. So, No More Heroes is one of our our favorite uh, singles by the Stranglers, and uh, with Ken Norton, our keyboard player's help, we uh, learned how to play it, and uh, it was a song that I I personally couldn't really play the guitar and sing at the same time all the way through, so uh, the version we're going to play for you of the Beef People covering the Stranglers' No More Heroes features our friend Olivier Massong. Um, our dear friend and f- fellow Frenchman like Jean right. Jacques Brunel, the bass player in the Stranglers. If you're going to play Stranglers, you got to bring in uh, uh, at least one French person. It's exactly. part. It's it's in part of the, the deal. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a, in the licensing arrangement. And uh, so this is the Beef People doing um, "No More Heroes" with Olivier playing lead guitar back in the day. Yeah. 
right. So there we are doing our best to be the stranglers. Um, we never could really get that mean, but we, we, we tried, you know, uh, it's a great song. We We've love, gotten that old. We, yeah. We love to play it <laughs> now. But, uh, yes. <laughs> it was great. So the B side of this single is a song called in the shadows and uh, it has this very weird uh, bass sound on it. Uh, they're running the bass through like an envelope filter. And uh, it was not on the No More Heroes record. It came out on the record that came after this one called Black and White, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And the cool thing, on the label of the single on the B-side, it says at the bottom, in the shadows, and in quotes, with the barracuda bass sound. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was going on there, but the, more more talking about the bass sound. It's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It sort of fits it, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. It does. So uh, we're going to go ahead and listen to In the Shadows, which is a good, kind of a threatening, scary song. Uh, perfect for the Stranglers. It's and, predatory <laughs> barracuda bass sound. It is. And here they, here they are from uh, 1977, the Stranglers with In the Shadows.
So there it was, the Barracuda bass and all the weird, scary, echoey noises. Um, I know that I, uh, I had to learn how to play that song on the bass. It was w- one of those uh, must, must play riffs on the bass for me. Um, we were discussing earlier, again, like we have with a few of these other bands like uh, Ian Dury uh, and The Jam, the strings are a British band, right? And yeah. and, and had real success and notoriety yes. and recognition were a thing. Yes, in Britain, in a way that they just did not. They just never broke it over right. here, and they never really tried either. They they only toured a little bit in the U.S. Um, did you ever see them? No, uh, my friend Joey saw them. Um, he has had a great story about going to the six eight eight in Atlanta to see them and uh, being so messed up he passed out under the <laughs> under the picnic table where he oh. was sitting so he went to see the stranglers but he didn't see them so i was <laughs> but they uh, probably saw him i was mad at him for doing that but uh you know those things were different in those days um no i never saw them but um i understand they were quite a fearsome live band and uh very very english british um they they um, were very uncompromising You'll find that they kind of adopted the punk ethos a little bit, but they they were much more professional musicians than than the other bands. They weren't about anarchy. They were about they talk about in the books, and there's a book I'm going to recommend. Uh, Hugh Cornwell, the the lead singer and guitarist, they they were aware of their chart positions. They were aware of having to have singles. They were aware of record sales and their record deal. And they played the game, and um, they did well at it most of the time. So um, they made a professional living out of being musicians, which, you know, there's no shame in that. Um, Even though they were kind of um, a scary band in the beginning, for sure. Um, Well, and I don't know that we... Did we talk about... uh, Well, I guess we did. The the, the, why would you... Mm -hmm. Why would you cover copy, a, right? Not not just cover, but copy, yeah, right? Um, the Stranglers, and, right? And, Which might know, not it might not make sense to an American audience at all. But you know, really, mm-hmm. that that idea of mm-hmm. you know success breeding success, right? <laughs> they were big in Britain, and it was if you were doing something like the Stranglers in Britain, you were more than likely to be successful. Mm-hmm. So um, that that was part of the whole the whole thing there. So, uh, let's see here. So we're talking about who we could hear cover this besides ourselves and, uh, Elastica stealing it outright. Um, you had a good idea. Yeah. I was th- saying maybe the Queens of the Stone Age yeah, or some, yeah. and maybe they bring a little more humor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little yeah. jocularity to yeah. leaven the, they could the heaviness. They could play it and they could, they could play the crap out of it. I'm sure. Uh, it would be very interesting to hear Josh and those guys, uh, do uh, no more heroes? I think that would be a really interesting thing. I would I would pay to see that for sure. Um, do you have a recommendation for this this episode? Yeah, my recommendation. Um, you know, speaking of Britishness, the mm-hmm. very British cooking show series of cooking shows featuring Keith Floyd. Keith Floyd. Keith Floyd. Um, you, you know, in the fine t- tradition of. The drunken uh, television presenter Drunk, cooking, drunken you know, wag, yeah, and, and but super charming mm-hmm. and and fun and I mean, in some ways, a precursor uh, to Bourdain and then you yes. know, like traveling mm-hmm. and talking about right. the localities, mm-hmm. partying, <laughs> and, and certainly with the partying, yes, and. Um, he always featured Stranglers music, yes, and. Um, so, you know, I, I always think about Keith Floyd when I'm right. when, in the same uh, uh, breath as I think about um, we used the Stranglers. To, we used to watch the Keith Floyd show, and I can't remember what channel it was on, but it was on regularly on some channel. Right, right. And, and it may uh, have been something like USA Network yeah, or, or something or like Night that. Or Night Flight or something. But, uh, and um, he had a, a number of series mm-hmm. of Floyd on Fish, Floyd yes, on mm-hmm. Food, mm-hmm. Floyd on you know, maybe mm-hmm. Italy yeah. or, or some localities. And they are just delightful. Mm-hmm. They're a lot of fun and I'm sure you can get them on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if something like Twitch. Twitch yeah. was running like all the Julia Childs right. you could catch on Twitch. So 
watch people play games right. or watch cooking shows. We can see if we can get some links for we'll you. We'll put some links put up, up if we can figure out where it is. Yeah. And, but it's worth looking for. Yeah, that's a great recommendation. Um, I have two, um, both Stranglers related. Um, the first two Stranglers records are excellent, uh, but my, my favorite of the early records is the third record. It's called Black and White, produced by Martin Rochent. They kind of get away from the misogyny and stuff, and it's more of a dystopian sort of um, vibe on this record. And they're really starting to, to find themselves. Tank is on that record. We used to play Tank. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah we were trying to remember yeah. which songs yeah, we used so to play. We, and it's like, oh, yeah. It's- yeah, we did Tank. And uh, so um, it's a, uh, to me, it's one of my top, in, in my top X number of records. So I won't get all high fidelity on you. But... Um, it's a record that I really love, and I play a lot still. Uh, Black and White by The Stranglers, I would definitely recommend that, their third album. Um, I have a copy on Black and White vinyl. Ooh, Ooh buzz, zub. And the other thing I would recommend, if you're interested in The Stranglers, there's a great book, and it's called, there's a series of them, there's only a few in the series, but it's called The Stranglers Song by Song. This guy, Ian, uh, not Ian, Jim, I was talking about Ian Dury before, Jim Dury, uh, interviews Hugh Cornwell of the Stranglers, and they literally go through every song in the catalog, including the B-sides. They talk about each one, and he explains uh, at length uh, for some of them what they're about, what they did, what they were, were up to, what this song is meaning. It's a little disjointed because John Jacques Burnell wrote uh, you know, a good bit of the songs, and so he's not involved in the book. And you know, um, Hugh will just say, well, this is one of John's songs. I think it's about this, but I'm not sure, you know. But he certainly talks about his own songs. It's a good book. Um, it's called The Strangler Song by Song. So those are my two recommendations. Do we have anything else? No, I don't think so. Okay, so there we go. The Because uh, oh, we, yeah, we did the cover. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. There's the, uh, the Stranglers episode... 039 singles going steady no more heroes and in the shadows uh the the punks that were actually professionals the stranglers <laughs> and they went on to have a, a long career they're still together hugh has left the band um but they had some some really big hits later and we, we may be talking about some of those in, in further yeah we, further we really enjoy the stranglers yep big inspiration on us And we are going to talk to you soon, I hope. And we will. Bye now. Bye. To learn more about the artists and recordings we just talked about, visit our website at zubrecords.com and click on the Singles Going Steady icon. You'll also find links to the persons, places, and things we recommend and much more. You can find episodes of Singles Going Steady on our website or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Singles Going Steady is brought to you by the power and majesty of Zub Records. Zub Zub Records. Records. Smart Smart sounds sounds for for sharp sharp people. people. Today.